Long before white men came to America, the Indians were making maple syrup in Minnesota. Their methods of harvesting sap were crude compared to our present day operations. The Indians processed sap in heavy iron kettles over an open fire where it bubbled and boiled until by appearance and taste, they thought it was ready to use. The resulting product was sweet, dark colored. Its flavor varied depending upon the amount of bark, dust, and ashes that got into the sap during harvesting and processing. Maples in fall present a brilliant panorama of color. Leaves range from yellow to a gorgeous red. Maple groves stand out conspicuously as if telling man to prepare for the winter season. Leaves of hard maple called sugar maple occur opposite on the twigs are three to five inches long, about the same width, and usually have five shallow lobes. In summer, the leaves are dark green above and light green on the underside. In Minnesota, millions of maple trees could and should be tapped. Such a harvest in early spring could add a half million dollars to the income of our farm people if the crop were properly harvested and the products well processed. And this is during a season that's not rushed with other farm work. The State Crop Reporting Service indicates that about 6,000 gallons of syrup are produced annually. Adjoining states of Michigan and Wisconsin produce seven to ten times that amount, with an annual maple crop spring income from $280,000 to $400,000. Maple groves are found in farming areas where the soil is good, but due to topography, the land may be unprofitable to farm. Minnesota's principal maple groves are located in the following areas. Red Lake, the counties of Beltrami, part of Clearwater and Becker, the area around Leachy River, counties of Todd, Stearns, then into Wright, Hennepin, and a little into Rice County. There are a number of trees in Itasca County around Mille Lacs and extending into Aiken and part of Kennebec counties. Maples are also found along the north shore of Lake Superior. And there are excellent sugar bush areas in the St. Croix River Valley. Maple sap flow begins in early spring while the snow is still on the ground. March and early April usually have the best flow. Sap harvest activities must be organized well in advance, trees selected and hauling trails laid out. Trees may attain a height of 60 to 80 feet with a diameter of two and a half feet or more. A tree with a full crown is a good producer. A forest floor rich in leaf cover, well decomposed and spongy, means the soil has good water holding capacity. Since maple sap is 90% water, the ability of soil to retain water is important. 
It is essential that a good supply of well-seasoned wood is ready. When the boiling of sap begins, no one has time to gather fuel. It requires a cord of wood for every 75 to 85 sap collecting buckets hung on trees. And from 35 to 40 gallons of sap must be boiled down to make a gallon of syrup. All equipment needed to produce syrup should be cleaned and sterilized at least a month before the sap gathering period begins. The spiles which are inserted into the trees must be washed with soapy water, thoroughly scalded and then rinsed. Pails and sap buckets should be washed with a detergent using a stiff brush, then rinsed in clean water. A power brush is often used to save hard labor and to speed up the job. Scouring and sterilization prevents contamination which would cause off taste and poor color. Only light colored syrup with good flavor brings top price and has good consumer demand. The evaporator must be thoroughly washed using a good detergent to make it sterile. Either a stiff hand brush or power driven brush will remove all dirt and caramelizing from last season processing. Rinsing with hot water several times assures a clean evaporator which will produce high quality syrup. The heavy wool filter is washed several times in boiling water. The filter is the last stage used to eliminate nitrates, calcium, magnesium, potassium and other trace mineral compounds that affect flavor and color. After thorough washing, the filter is hung in place ready to strain the syrup drawn from the evaporator. Filtering must be done before canning or bottling. Early Indian methods of tapping and harvesting maple sap were rather crude compared to those of today. A fairly deep diagonal groove was slashed on each side of the tree with a tomahawk or other sharp instrument. At the lower point of the V thus formed, a piece of birch bark was inserted to direct the flow of sap into a birch bark receptacle below. In tapping trees today, loose bark is first scraped off, then the tree is tapped using a hand brace and bit or power drill. The bit used for boring into the trees is 3 8 or 7 16 inch in diameter. The bit must be sharp to bring out the borings and leave a clean hole. Holes are bored at a slant and to a depth of 2 and a half to 3 inches. After a hole is bored, the metal spile is lightly driven in so as to fit snugly. If pounded in too hard, bark splits around the spile, letting sap ooze out, causing fermentation and spoiling the sap. A clean bucket is hung on the hook, which is a part of the spile. A tight cover prevents bark, dust, rain, snow and squirrels from getting into the bucket. Metal buckets are generally used in most small operations over the state. Sap flow starts in the spring when day temperatures get up to 45 degrees and night temperatures drop below. In many large operations, plastic bags with flap covers holding 16 quarts of sap are being used. These are now supplanting metal buckets. Plastic bags have several advantages. A greater number can be carried into the woods at one time compared to metal buckets. They are easily placed on spiles. They have their own covers and can be seen farther, saving many steps during gathering. Metal buckets, on the other hand, must be checked by close-up inspection, more often, and emptied full or not.
bags are easily emptied by grasping a lower corner and tipping them sideways into the gathering pail. Sap gathering is generally done by hand. The metal buckets or plastic bags are emptied into pails which are carried to collecting tanks. Power equipment is now generally used to pull the collecting tank. In the olden days, gathering equipment consisted of barrels or watering tanks mounted on wagons or sleighs drawn by horses or oxen. Collected sap is hauled from the woods and emptied into a storage tank at the sap boiling station, where it's boiled down in the finishing process. Since sap is 90% water, a great deal of boiling down is necessary. Here is a newer method of collecting sap. It's a network of transparent plastic tubing or pipeline system. The tubing is strung from tree to tree. Spiles are made of nylon or brass to fit into holes drilled by the standard tapping bit. Lines are adjusted to reach every producing tree. Convenient fittings connect each spile to the main flow lines, which take sap to the gathering tank located at a lower level. The spile and the main line connecting T are made with ringed grooves, so the tubing slips on over them snugly. This pipeline system is not difficult to install. It keeps the sap flow clean and pure. Chief advantage of the pipeline system is the lower labor cost in collecting sap. This system works best where trees are not too far apart and the land has a gradual slope. There are some problems involved, however. Deer may run into the lines unless lines are laid on the ground. Sometimes squirrels and mice gnaw holes in the tubing. Plastic pipeline tubing, however, has proven that clean, nearly... Regardless of collecting method, large operators require adequate storage facilities. Here is a typical large storage tank. And this is a complete farm sugar bush plant. Here takes place the most important step in maple syrup production, that of converting sap into high-grade syrup. This is a practical layout. An unused dairy barn was effectively rebuilt into a fine processing plant. Note that adequate ventilation has been provided to carry off the large amount of steam resulting from evaporating the excess water in the sap. The sap storage tank is located just below the hayloft, allowing the tractor and gathering tank to be driven in and emptied from above. The sap goes by gravity from this tank to the evaporator below. A constant roaring fire is required by modern evaporators to boil off excess water quickly. This emphasizes the need for a good wood supply. Rapid boiling of the sap is necessary for high-grade syrup. During the boiling process, hot liquid coming to the finishing side is checked frequently for temperature and density. Evaporators are constructed with staggered separations, partitioned so that the fresh sap entering at one end from the sap storage tank above, flows back and forth around the end partition openings. Light, cooler sap pushes the heavier, more concentrated sap on ahead until it arrives at the drawing off valve. Time of boiling varies with the amount of heat and the atmospheric pressure at time of evaporation. Once the boiling down is started, it must be continued around the clock until all the sap has been converted to syrup.
At the finishing side, the boiling sap is checked frequently for color and density. No guesswork is allowed. A hydrometer or thermometer indicates when the syrup is ready to be drawn off. When the finishing point is reached, the syrup is drained from the evaporator. Then it is strained through cheesecloth and later filtered through a heavy wool filter. The syrup is put up in one or five gallon tin cans, depending upon wholesale or retail outlet. It may later be transferred into small size containers. Pint and quart size are most popular. This is a large processing plant at Onamia, Minnesota. Large outside storage tanks are used to store sap purchased from small operators. The sap is bought by the gallon at a price based on sugar content. The plant also buys syrup from small local producers. This syrup is refined and reprocessed to assure uniform color and flavor. In the plant, the syrup being refined is constantly stirred and checked for temperature and density. A powdered chemical is added to help settle impurities that may still be in solution. This brings the original golden color, which is important to high-grade syrup. When syrup has reached its proper finishing point, it is drawn off and strained through a large commercial filter which has eight layers of filtering material. This removes foreign material which might affect color and flavor of the syrup. Small samples are checked against government color grades number one, two, and three. Color and flavor are important factors in meeting commercial market requirements. From sap storage tank to bottled syrup, the product is not touched by human hands. This bottling machine fills the bottles which are placed on a movable belt. At the next stage, they are capped and labeled. The syrup is now ready for boxing to go into commercial channels. Besides syrup, many other maple products are made. These include maple sugar, soft maple cream spreads, and other products for special commercial trade. They are packaged in attractive containers of different sizes and shapes. Many farm and small producers have their own trade emblems and special attractive containers. They sell to their annual list of customers, wholesale, retail, mail order, or at their own roadside stands. Their products are sold soon after maple harvest season. From tree to boiling sap, to pancakes. The maple syrup crop is truly one of the sweetest crops in America.